In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure an IoT access point so that it shows up in the Ruckus IoT controller dashboard. If we log into the Ruckus IoT controller, and our password was admin and admin, that was the default, you notice that we have no activity on the dashboard. And if I go over to the IoT AP, you'll see that there are no gateways available. So what I have to do is to get my IoT access point to show up in the Ruckus IO controller. If I go to my Ruckus Smart Zone, which I have open in another tab, you'll see that I do have an access point here and that the IP address is 192.168.8.100. So why isn't the AP showing up in the Ruckus IoT controller? The reason is that I don't have a DHCP option 43 on my network. Normally, in an enterprise, you would have this. Let's talk a little bit about the IoT access point discovery process. IoT APs are not manually added. They can only be auto-discovered using DHCP server option 43 or by configuring the Ruckus CLI on the IoT access point to discover the Ruckus IoT controller with specific commands. The virtual smart zone holds the IoT AP firmware and it's necessary to make sure that an IoT access point connects to the virtual smart zone and downloads the appropriate IoT firmware. To do this, the IoT AP needs to know the Virtual Smart Zone's primary controller address. If there is a DHCP server with option 43 enabled, it will give the IoT AP the Virtual Smart Zone's primary controller address through the controller discovery process. If no DHCP server option 43 is present, then the IoT AP will need to be manually configured with the Virtual Smart Zone's primary address. This can be done manually by configuring the IoT AP offline using the IoT AP's GUI interface. The other option is if you know the IP address of the IoT AP, you can launch a tool such as PuTTY and you can use the set SCG IP address and then do a set SCG reset. Now let's look at the IoT AP discovery process for the IoT controller. The process is similar. An IoT access point will normally discover the Ruckus IoT controller by using option 43 to discover the virtual smart zone with the following sub-options. Sub-option 21 is used to configure the Ruckus IoT controller version 4 address or the FQDN. Sub-option 22 is used to set the controller VLAN for the IoT controller data traffic, which is optional. As part of an IoT AP's boot up process, it checks for option 43 and sub-option 21 and 22. Once the application receives this information, it uses the information to connect to the Ruckus IoT controller over the public subscribe server or PubServe channel. As a note, configuring Windows or Linux DHCP server to set up option 43 is out of the scope of this demonstration, but we do have other videos on that. If the DHCP server option 43 is not present in the network, the IoT AP will need to be manually configured to discover the IoT controller. To do this, the administrator will log into the IoT AP and use the Ruckus CLI to give the AP the following commands to discover the IoT controller. We use the set IoTG-MQTT-Broker IP with the Ruckus IoT controller IP address and then set IoTG-MQTT-SSL1. So as we showed before, if we click on the IoT AP tab, we notice that there are no gateways available. So what I'm going to do is launch PuTTY and log into my AP. And if you notice, it's 192.168.8.100, which is the address of that AP. I'm going to open that up and log in. And you'll have to know the username and password. So we've logged in. So now we're at the Ruckus CLI. And what I'm going to do is type the command set IOTG MQTT broker IP and then give the IP address of the IoT controller. And if you remember in the past video, this was 192.168.8.151. So hit return. Then I would type the command set IOTG MQTT SSL1 and it helps if you type it right. Now I'll exit out of this. And if I go back to my IoT device, if I click on this and if I do a refresh, now you'll see that I have the AP. But at this point in time, it's not approved. So if I click on that AP and I toggle this on, IP, IoT AP approval, I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to apply that. And it'll say success. The operation is successful. 
If I wanted to pre-approve IoT APs, I could click on that. I could put in a MAC address as a single, or under batch, I could upload a CSV file and put in multiple APs if I wanted to pre-approve APs. And we'll close on that. So now if I go back to my dashboard, you'll see that now I have an IoT that's online. And it's green, which is good. That means it's online. You notice that the protocol here is Zigbee. So if I go back to that AP and I toggle that, you notice here that we have several modes. The mode could be Zigbee BLE or Zigbee Asa Abboy, which is what the AA stands for. So I'm just going to set this up as a Zigbee. I'm going to hit apply. That operation is successful. And at this point, we're now ready to install Zigbee IoT endpoints. So this concludes our demo on how to install an IoT AP using the Ruckus Virtual IoT Controller.